So with capacitors, we can also look at what happens when they charge and discharge. And I like this meme raccoon here saying, you know, they tried to teach me about capacitance, but I resisted. Uh, so let's look at discharging capacitors. What happens then is as they discharge, so that means that assuming that a capacitor is already charged, basically, so let's assume it's acting like a little battery, it's charged up, we've got a resistor there, and what we do is we take that switch and we, we close it. So when you close the switch, it'll discharge. And the charge in the capacitor will work like this. Here's the equation it's going to use. So it's going to sort of follow this. Um, let's look at this. So we've got Q. That's the charge remaining after some certain time. We've got Q0 is the initial charge. So that's in coulombs uh, as well. Time elapsed so will be in seconds usually. Time constant. We're going to see that right there, what kind of unit it has. But it's kind of like a unit of time. Uh, resistance is in ohms. And capacitance is in farads. So let's look carefully at this one right here. What it does, it's an exponential curve and it's a negative exponential. So hopefully you remember, it goes just like what radioactivity does. It sort of goes like, like this. Something like that. Of course it goes down to almost zero charge. Uh, so it's sort of asymptotic like this. That's okay, that shouldn't be too, too hard. I mean, we've got this weird thing called tau right here. This is this time constant. And we define it as r times c. So this is just a little piece right here. So you could say it's t over rc if you want, and that would be fine too. Uh, now let's look at this. What happens to the current and the potential difference during the discharge? So while it discharges, you know, we have both the current and the PD. Uh, because, of course, it's discharging, so we can, we can look at this. Um, so we have the current itself, and I hope it'll make sense then during the discharge that the current is going to go like this. So same sort of equation here. So it's also going to go like this. The potential difference will also go like this. That's of course while it discharges. But what I want to show you is what happens when it charges. So this is during charging. So this is where you're actually you know charging up a capacitor. Um, What's interesting, I mean, it should hopefully make sense that the potential difference will go up, but of course it becomes asymptotic because at some point it's actually fully charged, which means then there's no more current that will flow. And that's because it's got all the potential difference at once. What's kind of weird or counterintuitive is that while it's charging, the current still does this. That's actually because, like I said, once it's charged, then the current stops flowing. So that means once it's charged, the current stops flowing. It's a bit counterintuitive, this one. That's why I want to point that out. Okay, so while discharging, the current drops down like this. Well, while charging, it also does that. Potential difference, however, while discharging goes down and while charging goes up. So it's like the potential difference or the voltage is the one that sort of makes sense. It's the one that works the way it should. It's the current that's a little bit wacky. So do do keep that in mind. This right here is kind of a, this is important. Uh, now we have the energy that can be stored in a capacitor and it's just CV squared, where E is the energy stored, whoops, and energy stored, guess what unit that has? Joules. We've got capacitance, which is still in farads. We've got potential difference, which is in volts. So this is just a half CV squared, and you get this equation on your data booklet. Not really much to do about it other than there it is. Use it if you have C and E and you want V, for example, or something like that. If you know two of these three, then you can find the other one. I think more interesting then is just to look at some IB questions. So I like this one here in the circuit below. Capacitor C is charged through a resistor R. See that? So it's charged through this. Draw the graph of the potential difference versus time and the current versus time when the switch is closed. So we're told it's already charged, which means now when it's closed, guess what happens? Now it's going to discharge. So all you have to do for this is just remember what does the graph of a discharging V look like? Uh, the potential difference goes down. And so does the current. And that's all we needed. That's that question. So that was actually really easy. I was just asking what we had before. Now comes maybe a more interesting one. I like this one a lot better. Uh, so in the following circuit, we have a capacitor. It's initially uncharged, okay? So we start off with this little capacitor right here. We're going to say it's uncharged. It doesn't have any charge in it. It's got a capacitance, but it doesn't have any Q in it. No charge yet. Now the battery has a negligible internal resistance. That's good. That means it makes it a lot simpler to work with. We have a battery here at 12.0 volts. So now what we do is we close switch one. So you can imagine now this one here is closed. Now it goes like this. When this is closed, what happens? Actually, maybe I won't draw like that. I'll leave like this. This here is closed. Can you see we're going to complete the circuit this way or this way? 
So we're going to complete that circuit. So what happens then? It's going to charge. Okay, so this is important. The capacitor, it charges. So do a sketch of the potential difference versus time. Boy, have we seen this before? They love to ask about this, don't they? So we'll have time and we'll have a potential difference in volts and this will be in seconds. What happens uh, while it charges? We have to remember that graph, but it goes up like it should, like this. The current is the one that's weird while it charges. So it makes sense. The potential difference goes up. Now what do we do? We open that switch. So basically we stop basically this one here from happening. We open it like this and now we close two. Does that make sense that now it's going to discharge? That's the thing. See, the capacitor will discharge now. So this is the important thing, right? Because it, now it's charged, right? We close this, it's all fully charged. And now what we do is we close the, sorry, we open this and we close this. So now it can discharge. So what will be the drop in potential difference in the capacitor after this many seconds? So I think it's important to maybe just to try to look at what's the equation that we need for the potential difference. We have an equation for it, right? It's this one. Potential difference is V0 e to the minus uh, T over tau. Maybe we just need to find all these things and we can start plugging them in. So this is, this is going to be the potential difference after 7.1 milliseconds. Let's be very careful with the values we know, okay? Let's be very careful. We know that time, it's not just 7.1 seconds, it's 7.1 milliseconds. You have to be really careful with these. This is where you can make a mistake because it looks like a meter second. And this is the IB's most common thing that they like to do is to put MS because it looks like meter seconds. Like, aha, we're trying to trick you. So don't get tricked by that. It's a millisecond, so it's 10 to the minus three seconds. Uh, do we know R? We sure do. It's uh, 7,900 ohms. Do we know C? We sure do. It's uh, five times 10. And remember what micro means? Times 10 to the minus six. Uh, farads. So we have these values right here. So what do we put in here? Do you see how we can actually figure this all out? We know the um, initial amount, by the way, because what happened? It fully charged. So do we know what the potential difference across that uh, uh, capacitor was? We sure do. It was actually 12 because this was 12. So we can say this one here is 12. Therefore, we put this all in here. Let's see if we can do it. So we have V equals, let's see, 12 times E to the power of negative, let's say it's 7.1 times 10 to the minus three, all that divided by tau, remember tau is R times C. So we have to put in 7,900 times C, which is five times 10 to the minus six. Phew, let's see if that works. Uh, so I'm gonna start over at the bottom, maybe just to make it easier. So five times 10 to the minus six, I'm gonna do that times 7,900. I'm gonna say in brackets, 7.1 times 10 to the minus three, divided by that answer. I'm gonna take e to the negative, that answer, and I'm gonna take that times 12. And I end up with something like 10 equal, uh, sorry, v equals 10.02, but I'm only allowed two significant figures. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, I'm only allowed two significant figures. So I'll just say 10, um, and what's the units here? It should be actually just 10 volts. So this is your answer, right? Nope. Look very, very carefully. This is the potential difference um, in the capacitor after this many seconds. This is what it will be. However, they didn't ask what is the potential difference in the capacitor. They said, what's the, watch very carefully, this is why it's a sneaky question, what's the drop? So this is the potential difference after 7.1 seconds. The problem is that's not the drop. The drop, is equal to the original amount that it started off with. It started off with 12 when it was charged. So it's 12 minus 10, so that equals 2.0 volts. Sneaky, sneaky IB. And then finally, we gotta calculate the charge that flows in the circuit during that time. Um, maybe a good way to do that is just to use this equation of C uh, equals Q over V. I think that's maybe the, the simplest version to use. And therefore we can say Q then equals CV. Now keep in mind, during this right here, we have two different amounts of charge. I and mean, we, we need to find basically the difference in charge. That's the amount of charge that flowed. So I think it's important to do maybe Q initial. We'll figure that out. Uh, maybe I'll do this uh, over here. I'll bring it to the left side maybe. We'll do it down here. 
we'll have q initial and we'll have q final. Maybe that's going to be simpler like this. So I'll have q final. So q initial will be the initial c, which is 5 times uh, 10 to the minus 3, uh, minus 6, I mean, sorry. So 5 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, times v initial, which is 12. Now the final amount, we need to find out this, right? We need to find out uh, what the final capacitor's value will be after this right here. So how do we actually figure that out? Um, well, I mean, we know, sorry, we know the capacitance, sorry, it's still five. Actually, that doesn't change. The value that changed is actually this number right here, this V. Because the potential difference, final, is not 12, it's now 10. So we can still use that answer of 10 that we had before. So this is what we're going to be calculating, is these two values here. So we'll do 5 times 10 to the minus 6 times 12. So just in case you want to do all this right here, you can do it like this. Uh, there we get 6 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, coulombs. And of course, if we have 5 times 10 to the minus 6 times 10, that just multiplies it by 10, which means it goes 1 less. So this is 5 times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs. And the charge that flows will be a delta Q. That'll be the flowing charge. It'll just be the one minus the other. So six times 10 to the minus five minus five times 10 to the minus five, which is one. Now we're supposed to have two significant figures. So I'll say 1.0 times 10 to the minus five coulombs. There we go. So that is our final answer. So we've dealt with capacitors and hopefully you haven't reached your capacity for these kind of questions, but there we go. We're done with that bad pun. Sorry.